Two-stroke engines really are incredible machines, and in my videos I aim to bring to light just how easy they are to work on and just how reliable they are as well. And in today's video, I'm going to cover one of the most common mistakes that people make when servicing and repairing their carburetors at home. There are so many small drillings on one of these carburetors, and the one we're focusing on today is the high-speed needle drilling. To access this drilling, we have to first take off the high speed screw, and this is the one that's furthest away from the engine itself. We'll then take off the four screws on the metering side cover, and that will expose a number of drillings, Welsh plug, and also other parts that are involved in metering the fuel supply for the engine. Don't get overwhelmed with all these small pieces. They're actually very simple. In today's video, we're just gonna focus on that brass drilling that you can see, and the little diaphragm that's inside it. Now, in this case, the main nozzle is underneath what we call a Welsh plug. If I take now another main nozzle from a different engine, I'll be able to show you exactly what can go wrong. Inside this main nozzle, we have what's called a main nozzle check valve. This is a small piece of diaphragm material, and it ensures that air cannot bleed back into the metering side of the carburetor when you're idling your engine. And when you go to full throttle, that vacuum created pulls that diaphragm down and it allows fuel to come in and flow to the engine. Sometimes that diaphragm can get stuck and people are tempted to then use carb cleaner, brake cleaner and compressed air and blow it through those drillings. But what will happen is you'll actually dislodge that small disc, that small main nozzle check valve, and then it will allow air to constantly be coming back into the metering chamber. And then when you're at idle, it's going to be giving you lean symptoms. Once you've dislodged that little disc, there's no saving it. If you're lucky to find it, which is very unlikely, then you could possibly place it back inside. The chances are though, you're gonna to have to pull that main nozzle out and replace it. It's not a difficult thing to do, and I've actually covered this in other videos before, but at that point, if you're not that confident with working on these carburetors, it's better just to replace the thing entirely. So how do we clean these passages and not blow out that main nozzle check valve? Well, firstly, be very cautious with any compressed cans, brake cleaner, carb cleaner. It's much better to be gentle and gradually build that pressure up. You can use compressed air on these drillings, but make sure you turn the regulator right down to very, very low pressure. Soaking the carburetor is an excellent way to soften, to loosen, to remove any varnishized fuel, any dirt and debris. And using fuel bottles like I've got here really helps to allow you to control the pressure that you're applying to those areas. And it really helps to reduce the chances of you blowing that nozzle out. You also have Welsh plugs inside here and compressed air can blow those out as well. You can damage the fuel pump diaphragm if you start blowing compressed air in through the inlet bar on one of these carburetors. It's much better to avoid using compressed air. If you have to use it, use it very, very gently. Reduce that regulator. Use squeezy bottles to push fuel or cleaner through rather than compressed cans and you'll find that you're much more likely to have a serviceable carburetor after you've finished repairing it. And staying on the topic of carburetors, I've got this video here that's gonna teach you everything you need to know about disassembling, diagnosing, repairing, and replacing parts on a two-stroke carburetor. And on this side, I've got everything you need to know on the same principles, but on a four-stroke float bar style carburetor. I hope they help. 